Thank you, thank you, Chairperson. And good afternoon, everybody. First of all, I want to congratulate American College of Chess Physicians in Indian chapter for organizing this, or, uh, this conference and, and giving me an opportunity to give this lecture on the basic of fiber optic bronchoscopy. And the purpose of this talk is to sensitize the physicians regarding the bronchoscopy and you have seen in my, you will see in my, uh, see in my slides that first bronchoscopy was done by ENT surgeon and later on lots of physicians are doing bronchoscopy world over. So in next 20, 25 minutes, first I will give the glimpse of what is basic bronchoscopy, what is the indication and other, and what is the newer things are coming up in the bronchoscopy, uh, the suits and Later on, uh, I'm having this, uh, uh, this Olympus bronchoscope uh, workshop. Uh, if anybody want to do hands-on, you can, uh, I'm glad and thankful for Olympus people for giving this mannequins and this scope uh, here. So to start, I am Dr. Virottam Tamar from Meerut as working as interventional pulmonologist. So since long, doctors are having curiosity to look inside the body, how we can see inside the body. And it started, this journey started in 1805 when Philip Bozzoni invented this illuminator. And he took this candle and the mirror here and he looked in the throat and see vocal cords. And later on, till date, we are having the small chips by, that can be put on the fingertips that we can see these, all these images in the monitor. Regarding this bronchoscopy, the Gustav Killian, we call it the father of bronchoscopy. He has done first uh, removal of uh, uh, foreign body from the right main bronchus in 1897. And before that, in 1895, Alfred Christian from Germany, first direct visualization of vocal cords done by using of esophagoscope, he called it otoscope. And Gustav Killian in 1897 from uh, Freiburg, Germany, examined trachea and main bronchi and removed three foreign bodies in the similar fashions from the rigid bronchoscope. And 1898, uh, Dr. Elgren colleague from Harvard Medical School used open urethroscope with a head mirror to see the, and to remove the hard rubber from the right main bronchus. On May 29, 1898, Gustav Killian stated at the fifth annual meeting of South German ENT Society conference in his first report on direct bronchoscopy, he said, the practical relevance of bronchoscopy cannot be assessed accurately at that mo moment. I hope that apart from foreign bodies and bronchial disease, it may also be applied to diagnose and therapy of affections of the lung. And today, more than after 125 years, what Dr. Killian said is true today, and we are using this uh, utility in different diseases, uh, uh, disease and for different purposes. In 1897, the same, the junior of Dr. Gustav Gillian Polinki uh, in Freiburg University said, on March 30th of this year, I had the honor to assist my admired principal, Professor Gillian, in extraction of piece of bone from the light bron right bronchus. This case is of such peculiarity with respect of diagnostic and therapeutic importance that a more extensive description seems justified. And these are the pictures Dr. Killian doing in the sitting posture or in the lying posture using this primitive rigid bronchoscope. Later on, Cavalier Jackson has invented the telescopes and he has his, he has, uh, his own workshop. They developed zero degree, 30 degree and 90 degree telescopes and they use in uh, rigid bronchoscopy. In 1970, 80, the era comes of fiber optic. And Dr. Shijita Ikeda developed this flexi-rigid and this flexible bronchoscope, and he, we call him is the father of flexible bronchoscopy. These are the developments you can see the, from starting rigid bronchoscope to uh, flexible bronchoscope from video scopes. And later on, we are now having robotic bronchoscopes in an, uh, worldwide. We are using different types of world, very thin, small scope, pediatric scopes, alveolar scopes we are having which we are using in pulmonary medicine. This is the basic bronchoscope, videoscope, like this, which is having, uh, latest one is 190 series. That is very advanced bronchoscope. 
to just to give, give the indication uh, list of indications we can use in as a diagnostic tool like in for ventilator associated pneumonias for community acquired pneumonias for acute interstitial lung disease like hypersensitive pneumonitis and intrathoracic tumors are for therapeutic purpose to remove the mucus from the uh, uh, bronchus especially in the icu patient when on ventilators or to remove the inhaled foreign bodies to look the central obstructing tumors central area of tumors and the management of massive hemoptysis these are the having good utility and it also help to support regard when anesthetists fail to intubate or patient is having difficult intubation then we can use this type of uh, technology even in for percutaneous stachyostomy we use to the this type of uh, this uh, bronchoscope we can utilize and the like inspection of upper airways lower airways vocal cords to LV, L, for evaluation of diagnosis of chronic cough the most important use of bronchoscopy is cough more than 37 to 48% bronchoscopy is utilized for the cough and in any physician's clinic more than 50% patients are from the simple cough or uh, viral bronchitis sometimes but these chronic cough not always chronic bronchitis there may be some foreign bodies there may be endobronchial tumors there may be interstitial lung disease so it's the evaluation of bronchos the uh, chronic cough this is the tool to rule out to for wheezing evaluation especially in children to look out for on bodies for pneumonia persistent pulmonary infiltrates disrupted bronchial tree secondary to trauma thermal or chemical inhalation injuries and position of patency of endotracheal tube or tracheostomy tube and the management of tracheoesophageal fistula we can put stents flex, uh, the, uh, both uh, metallic stents and the plastic stents for management of tumor debulking of tumors to removal of foreign bodies and to assess the lymphadenopathy by transbronchial needle aspiration for medicinal lymph node we can do different type of uh, needles we can use for medicinal lymph nodes there are few contraindications like absolute is like patient has not uh, not given informed consent you have not taken informed consent profound refractory hypoxia is not improving by giving simple 2 liter 3 liter of oxygen by face uh, 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 face mask or patients having severe bleeding diathesis not controlled at the time of procedure and patients having my cardiac malignant cardiac arrhythmias relative indications like patients having lack of cooperation recent myocardial infarction or unstable angina respiratory in insufficiency or failure uncontrolled hypertension and severe pulmonary artery hypertension are a relative contraindications and uremia especially when we want to take biopsy uh, trans bronchial lung biopsy you should avoid in the and to start with bronchoscopy there is a simple uh, uh, requirements like one table uh, ot table simple ot table can work and oxygen source and suction should be good and at least two suction should be there in ot so if one fails then uh, another should work all cardiac monitoring and resuscitating and the trolley for all instruments and facility to display radiographs the trained respiratory or any physician can do if having little bit training in the bronchoscopy he can perform uh, bronchoscopy in any uh, hospital ot uh, in bedside even in icu he can perform uh, this type of uh, procedure two persons are minimally required uh, like a, one scrub nurse and one uh, the trained physician but you can have if you have opportunity to have one or more if you are doing in an anesthesia then definitely require one three or four personnel to do in anesthesia informed consent is must all parameters like bleeding parameters bt ct pt ptt and platelets are essential along with urea and radiologically you have at least x-ray chest pa view or lateral view ct is quite is more informative if you are having hr ct so that you can do the bronchial lavage for particular segment and you can avoid uh, unnecessary poking this scope in other segments the instrument is basically flexible and rigid but to start flexible bronchoscope is a, uh, is a must and if you are having rose facility roses rapid on site evaluation for like if you are doing trans bronchial needle aspiration then immediately a pathologist give answer that this patient is having at least lymphocytes or uh, any malignancy in the lymph node or not so you can um, uh, do this uh, by rose technique for upgradation the new technology that has changed the pulmonary medicine totally i can say the pulmonary medicine has changed since the 
development of bronchoscope, then later on development of HRCT thorax, and now in 2000, it's the EBUS, endobronchial ultrasound that has changed totally the pulmonary medicine or interventional pulmonary medicine era, that is uh, EBUS, uh, you can, uh, we can have this position, the routine we are doing from the supine, from the head end, or later in position you can do when uh, few uh, bronchoscopies are trained in the lateral positioning. Anesthesia, local anesthesia, 2% xylokin, even I am doing in the 1% xylokin spray on the vocal cords, and conscious sedation can be used like in midazolam or using propofol or combination of this uh, fentanyl and this midazolam. Definitely you will require this type of uh, workshops where you can train with experienced uh, experts to how to do bronchoscopy. There are simulators are available where you can learn different types of uh, stations, how to perform, and different books are available like this, uh, bronchology www.bronchoscopy.org, uh, where you can learn the basic bronchoscopy, even advanced bronchoscopy, even uh, EBUS you can learn in this, uh, having this, uh, you can note down and you can learn to start bronchoscopy. When we say the technology, the newer development in interventional pulmonology, look this video, it's like this. What we are assuming now, that is becoming uh, uh, become very uh, near future, there are these technology can be available. So, like this, EBUS. You are doing, this is the EBUS, is the bronchoscope. On bronchoscope tip, there is a ultrasound probe. This is a convex probe, and here needle will come out, and while direct visualization, when you touch this scope to the tracheal wall, you will see the different lymph nodes and vasculatures, and in real time, you can puncture these lymph nodes very efficiently. So this is the uh, change in the different needles we are having Transbronchial, trans uh, for lymph node biopsy, we are having small miniature needles. And the elastography, we can use like this in blue dot here. If you are finding on EBUS this large round lymph node, we can say that this is a malignant lymph node. If it is reddish in color, there is a benign lymph node. So you can accurately, if you are finding one blue when and another one is red, so you have to puncture this blue one to confirm that this uh, you are hitting right node or not. Just to give the, this EBUS, endobronchial ultrasound, how it works. This is the lymph node, and here see, this is the needle. The real-time FNAC you can done when you are puncturing this limb, uh, lymph node by the EBUS scope. This needle is coming out and taking the FNAC, this from the, here. Uh, this subcarinal lymph node, basically. This is a subcarinal lymph node, station seven, we call it. And this elastography, I have already told you regarding this. Another thing is coming up is electromagnetic navigation. In India, two centers are having this electromagnetic, the EVM we called, where you c it's like you are driving a car with the, G with the help of a GPS, if there is any particular peripheral nodule is present like here, so you have to select the path, and this module, this system give you the path, and you have to reach at that permanent nodule very efficient. Uh, very efficaciously, and you can take out the transbronchial lung biopsy from peripheral nodule very perfectly. Life is a tool, another method to of bronchoscopy, where the laser-induced fluoroscopic guidance images are pro produced. If you detect in malignancy, this like in carcinoma in C2 or early dysplasia from mucosa from the trachea bronchial tree, you can increase the survival of the patient up to the 90%. But if you detect it later on stage, when invasion has already occurred, hardly five years survival is hardly 15%. So there are the method like this. Life, when we use in normal white light bronchoscopy, you find almost normal mucosa, little bit inflammation. But when you put, when put, put a button and shift to the life or uh, light band imaging, you find this is the suspicious malignant or dysplastic mucosa, and if you take biopsy from this, and you can, uh, I think, uh, detect earlier malignancies of trichobronchial tree and uh, increase the life. This is a narrow bending imaging, increasing the size, uh, vascularity, you can see the same looking normal mucosa, but when you switch off to the NBI by the same button here, that can be, you can find this uh, increased vascularity and take biopsy from this mucosa. Another thing is coming up, it's the optical biopsy. 
even without doing biopsy, you can see the invasion of this mucosal or cartilages. When you touch this growth and you want to see the invasion by optical biopsy, without doing biopsy, you can do. And one thing is more coming up, the confocal biopsy, the imaging. It is a real-time images of histopathologically. Without even taking tissue from the bronchus or alveoli, you can see these type of disease. Uh, and whereas the risks are more, like interstitial lung disease, IPF, you don't want to take biopsies. At that moment, this type of confocal imaging are helpful, and this will be available. You can see this alveolar structure looking. This is the norm, is abnormal, and this is a normal structure. This is totally infiltrate with the either malignant alveolar carcinoma or the different things. Here you can see the virtual histology. By putting scope on the alveoli, you can see the malignant tissues are coming like this. It's a normal, and this you can see the larger. So without taking biopsy, you can see by the bronchoscope, and this the endoscopists are using in the colonic cancer. You can, this is a colonic cancer cells looking like this when they are the throw. These are the technology. One more technology, like COPD patients, where emphysema is significant, if you do lung volu volume reduction surgery, the survival and the, the breathlessness score and overall in, in, uh, decrease Im improve. And the, but the risk of VATS or thoracic surgery is significantly high. So what we are doing, we are having this bronchoscopic valves are there, the one-way wall. When you put this wall, like in the upper lobe bullous area, if you want to occlude this or lung volume reduction you want to do, you first judge, calculate the size of this bronchus, and you can in put different walls in, in all segments to complete collapse this upper lobe. And this is what we call non-surgical uh, techniques like this, one-way wall. You have putting the umbrella wall, all secretion will come through there, but no air will go inside this. So there's no chances of abscess formation and all that and all the lung air from the particular lobe will come out and this, this part of either segment or lobe will collapse automatically. So this is a very newer things uh, that, that are available and practicing in the world over. And in India, I think in next few years, it, the government will allow to put these type of walls. Like you can see here, this is the looking emphysematous lung. And if you want to collapse this lung, you can see this is the complete collapse of this lung and patient that contour of diaphragm will improve and the uh, dyspnea score reduces significantly when you're using this type of. Another methodology by putting the shape memory nitilol stents, uh, this implants, when you put these stents in the particular bronchus, this will take automatically shape and reduce the particular seg uh, lobe or segment uh, volume. Here you can see in this picture, multiple coils are putting in the upper lobe to reduce, and you can see the contour of the diaphragm, which was flattened earlier, it become uh, uh, convex. This is the observed volume reduction without surgery of upper lobes. One more thing is micro debrider, especially for central airway obstruction, you can do directly putting this uh, debrider in the bronchus and immediately cut and suck out these, all these debris from the bronchus. This is a newer technology. And futuristic robotic bronchoscopes already uh, world over is existing without like uh, uh, robotic surgery. The pulmonologist sit here and bronchoscope work on the patient and very precisely you can take different type of biopsies and uh, lavage from the segments. These are the futuristic uh, the capsule bronchoscopes. Endobronchial gene therapy is newer technology where direct installation of soluble vectors via bronchoscope, you can reduce different type of uh, diseases like in cystic fibrosis, adenovirus, adeno-associated viruses, and lipid DNA complexes are putting directly in the airways, and they work well. And even in non-small cell lung cancer, delivery of WTP33, a tumor suppressor gene, which is responsible for detecting and repairing da damage of DNA also as a guardian of genome, you can reduce the increase the, or uh, reduce the size of this cancer and progression of these type of cancers by endobronchial gene therapy. And the future developments by high intensity focused ultrasound itself will be an efficient tool for destruction of pathogenic tissues like, and we are using endoscopic MRI. 
more recent developments, neurons are directly connected to the computers or computer-driven machines. This manipulator will be no longer controlled by hands, but eye tracker and brain wave sensors can do all these, uh, uh, these bronchoscopic maneuvers. J just uh, I'm putting in one scenario. Like a per person at risk of lung cancer screened by molecular analysis for his exhaled for suspicious cells. By exhalation, you can detect malignancy. Alteration indicates by cluster of oncogenes and suppressor genes that he has developed early stage lung cancer. After overt tumor or peripheral lesions have been excluded by HRCT, a detached, detect, detached computer-driven endoscope is sent down the airway by navigation according to the virtual 3D bronchoscopy. By fluorescence imaging, a truly early lesion is detected like I have shown, shown in previous slide. By optical coherence tomography, which I have shown in the previous slides, by OCT and micro scan, an early stage cancer confirmed by a pathologist after transmission of images to the department. Local strategies by 3D video imaging and a high resolution ultrasound proves that lesion is within the superficial layer or bronchial walls and no lymph nodes or metastasis in the lung. If curative local treatment seems feasible by excision, the data are fed to the robot that guides an intelligent molecular nano knife which cuts out the lesion exactly with some safety margins, a local cytotoxic or immunological sterilizing agent is instilled into the tumor bed before the wound is closed by an intelligent fibrin suture that automatically attaches itself to the rims of and closes the gap of impaction. So in one sitting, by you, can do, you are diagnosing the ma malignancy, you are removing the malignancy, so this is the future where by bronchoscope you can achieve this type of uh, uh, surgical removal or uh, treatment of malignancies and other diseases. Here, this is the video uh, this, uh, of bronchoscope, how we do this. We are going through the nose, you can see here, and we are reaching to the vocal cords by spraying local anesthesia 1% or 2%, a few percent are using 10% xylocaine spray. This is the epiglottis. These are the vocal cords, you see. And by proper anesthetizing these vocal cords, we are entering into the trachea. The scope should remain into the center of the tracheal lumen, not touching the trachea. If you touch the trachea, then cuffing will start. And after reaching below, you see the, this, this is the carina, this is the main carina, and left main bronchus on the left side, right main bronchus on the right side. Again, you have to put topical xylocaine to anesthetize this area. And when you enter into the right main bronchus, turning to right side, this is a right subcarina, middle lobe, and right lower lobe. And here you can see this is RC1. And when you want to see the right upper lobe, you can again further move, like here. When you move, you can see this is a Mercedes Benz sign, right upper lobe, apical segment, anterior segment, and the posterior segments when you reach to the right upper lobe. And when you take out again into the uh, bronchus intermediates and want to go uh, beyond uh, in the below, you can see these structure like th these are the uh, middle lobe and lower lobe you can see very effectively like uh, this is the RC2, the middle lobe on the 11 o'clock position and here you can see the four or five segments of the, the right lower lobe. And then in the same manner, when you withdraw this scope to the carinal level and want to see the left side of bronchus, you have to see that the on the uh, basically on the right side, uh, there is uh, uh, almost uh, three lobes, right upper, right middle, and right lower. But on the left side, there is only left upper lobe and uh, left lower lobe. In upper lobe, there is a division of uh, lingular lobe that is uh, I will show you. Uh, we are seeing this is the right lower lobe here. This is the low roll segments, medial basal segments, anterior basal segments, lateral basal segment, posterior seg basal segments. But on left side, medial basal segments usually remain absent. So this is the way how we see on the right side, different segments anatomy. It is very essential to look the manuals of bronchoscopy and videos of bronchoscopy to uh, confirm that this which is 
segment we are dealing is the middle lobe or the lower lobe and which segment ex, uh, uh, we are having. So this is not a very difficult task when you are doing and you performing the bronchoscopy with local anesthesia or to start initially you can do in the conscious sedation. We are coming back and now we will turn the scope to the, in the right left main bronchus. You will see here the two, the two lobes will appear, two openings, one for upper lobe and one for lower lobe. And when you reach in the upper lobe, again there is a division for lingula and upper lobe there is a apico-posterior segment and the anterior segment onto the uh, left side. So here this is a LC2 and you when you further go, there is a upper lobe segments, anterior, apico-posterior and this is the segment. So uh, by this way, you can see different segments and anatomy of the uh, lower lobe like this here this is the lower lobe you can see here medial basal segment is absent here and you can see superior segment to uh, lower lobe segments one more thing uh, you want to show how we remove this bronchoscopically we can remove this type of growth without surgery or when patient is not fit for surgery or patient is having metastasis and uh, uh, tumor is blocking the airway very efficiently we can remove by snare electro we call it electrosurgical snare uh, which uh, gastroenterologists are using may i ask from the audience how many you have seen bronchoscopy in their hospital or endoscopy in their hospitals two three yeah so this is the technique uh, the like uh, endoscopists are using we are using uh, removal uh, like endoscopists are uh, uh, removing the polyps we are using in the airway and by removing this we can take out by the cryoprobe or by foreign body forceps we can remove these type of large growths very efficiently even in conscious sedation so these are the debulking technique which we are doing in our practice uh, for removal of the central area obstruction in 2009 uh, I am. Uh, I have removed the seven tooth intact in a denture. Adult patient has taken with bronchoscope, and it is. Uh, I think is uh, it is the largest foreign body world over, which have removed from the airways the seven bone, seven tooth intact in the. This is in you know, my YouTube. It is you can, if you want to see, like this. If you see this patient present with cough, with no fever, no any uh, chest pain, no dyspnea, and long lasting chronic cough. This is the X-ray, but here you can see there's a collapse of left lower lobe. If you do bronchoscopy here, uh, we have done bronchoscopy, this is my patient, and we, I will surprise. You see, this is on the left main bronchus, you see the whitish structure the looking like a growth. When I have taken the biopsy from this lesion, it was very foul smelling. So I, when I taken out, uh, this bronchoscope out and ask the patient what you have taken anything inside uh, any history of any uh, eating anything so he said his doctor one ayurvedic doctor uh, suggested to take this uh, garlic clove to take for cardiac diseases so he garlic clove impacted in the left main bronchus and it was very foul swelling we have taken out with the rigid bronchoscope so this is the way how suspicious of chronic cough uh, always suspect foreign bodies, even in adults, if they are not giving history of uh, any asphyxiation or uh, inhalation of any foreign body. One more, like here, this uh, patient is presenting with right side uh, uh, collapse of lung and by direct, the, just at the level of carina, this is the technique how to take biopsies from the uh, um, uh, growth uh, to confirm that disease. So I think uh, we have done almost 25 minutes. And uh, any question if you want to ask regarding before starting workshop, uh, anybody want to do hands-on, so we can do hands-on training. Isko chalo kar do. Olympus people is there? Any? Yeah. Okay.